So what's a match filter decorrelator? Now, in a decorrelator, what, what, what's correlation? Correlation is how similar two signals are to each other. So in our receiver, for example, if we're using BPSK, then we have two, two known symbols that will be transmitted. If we're using QPSK, we will know that there, there are four known symbols that are transmitted, and APSK, there are eight, obviously. So what we will do is at the receiver, we will look and see which our received signal is closest to. So we will perform the correlation, sorry, we will perform a correlation on what we've received with what with each of the four um, symbols, if it's QPSK, for instance, and then we will say wherever the correlation is highest, then that is the one that was sent. So the definition, correlation is uh, the correlation of a known signal or a template with an unknown signal to detect the presence of the template in the unknown signal. Equi it's equivalent to convolving the unknown known signal with a conjugated time-reversed version of the template. An optimal linear filter for maximising the signal to noise ratio in the presence of additive white Gaussian noise. So where, where are decorrelator detectors used? They're commonly used in radar because we send a, a known signal out and then a signal is reflected and returns to the transmitter or to the same place and we examine the differences and how common it is to the outgoing signal. So has the frequency changed? How's the amplitude changed? Um, are we looking for Doppler frequencies? Pulse compression is an example of matched filtering. It is also called because the impulse response is matched to the input pulse signals. Okay, so this is the block diagram of the matched filter most likely multi-user detector. So what we have is we have the same um, block diagram. However, here at the back, we have a centralised maximum likelihood detector. And then it will output what it thought bit 1 was from user 1, from user 2, and from user K. Obviously, this needs to be done at a base station, because that's where multiple users are being um, transmitted to a common place. However, um, if you would like to look at it in further detail... Um, you can use um, OFDM where we transmit these these bits are not necessarily different users we could be using different channels from the same user we have we can then go into the realm of transmit and receive diversity again that's a bit high level for this level of course this would be done on uh, in the MSC level so, maximum likelihood detection over a finite set. So, in our example, let's take Q, oops, excuse me, Q, P, S, K. Need to get them better. S, K. So, we have four symbols. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So, we have our input X, we have our max filter, no noise, and then we have our received signal times X, and we add noise. R is known, X set is known, and X set, no noise, is also known. So we look at the minimum difference between our, 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 what we receive and what X would be without any noise. So the capacity of a system with a large number of users is shown in this diagram here. So it, it's showing the minus Ly, dependent on the amount of interference. So in a conventional signal single cell match filter receiver, then the um, as the signal-to-noise ratio is increasing, then the normalised 
normalised channel capacity is reduced as shown by this green line. B is the random signature or st statisti statisti st statistically orthogonal multi-user capacity which is um, closer to 1 and C is orthogonal multi-user system so we have ideal conditions and the channel capacity the whole of the channel is being used because obviously it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter about the interference because we have total orthogonality so this is the block diagram of the correlator detector so at the the difference here is we've got a centralized decorrelator detector and it de it cal calculates r to the minus 1 so y is sx plus n x match filter as we've already said is s hermitian y s hermitian h sorry s hermitian times s times x plus s hermitian n equals rx plus n hat. So if we multiply rx by r to the minus 1, so we've got r inverse x hat. So r to the minus 1 received match filter x hat equals the x decorrelator. So r to the minus 1 times r x plus r to the minus 1 times r gives us x plus 0 multiple axis interference plus noise. But r to the minus 1 could be very large. How we will um, implement this in MATLAB, r is defined as s transpose times s r decorrelator, decorrelator is the inverse of r here and x decision is the sign of r decision times s inverse times our y y is the original signal which has then been um, in, in this case converted to bpsk and noise has been added this is higher up in the program but I'm not showing the whole program here and um, what we have now is we have x decision sorry x decorrelator we're in the same way converting it from ones and minus ones to ones and zeros so we've got x demodulated decorrelator and we're summing that with the original x and we're counting the number of errors then we're adding that to the final error and we're we're doing that for a different number of bits and then we will loop around again in the program for different signal to noise ratios. So that's the matched filter decorrelator. So let's talk about the minimum mean squared error matched filter. So the centralized minimum mean squared error detector is defined by the R plus sigma squared times the identity, identity matrix inverse or to the minus 1. Again this is a centralized MMSE detector, this is the simplest one. So we have again our match filter x hat match filter times rx plus n. x tilde here is g which is the spreading gain times the matched filter. The error or E G E is what our X tilde is, take away our actual X. And the error is X minus G X hat matched filter. So what we want to do is we want to minimize this error because it's minimum mean squared error. So we need to find the linear operation G over X match filter that minimizes the error. So what's the value of G? So G, minimum mean squared error. Now I'm not going to worry about how this is defined. 
is given by r plus the sigma squared identity of matrix inverse. This is a complex formula. It's called the Sherman Morrison Woodbury formula, and it 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 multiply it's multiply the multiply out of this formula here, working backwards. Um, the x tilde is g minimum mean squared error x mf is this. So x is our x tilde, this is our output, g is this, so g x hat, x plus multiple axis interference, or the multiple axis interference is given by the minus of the noise variance, times r to the minus 1, identity matrix, plus sigma squared r to the minus 1, all to the minus 1, x hat. And similarly, the noise is r plus sigma squared i to the minus 1, n hat. So the minimum mean squared error is similar to the decorrelator matrix with sigma squared, when sigma squared tends to 0. So when we have no noise, the outputs are the same. Don't worry about the de derivation. In MATLAB, the implementation is R minimum mean squared error is equals the inverse of R plus sigma over 2 times the identity matrix, so I of K users. This will be explained in your lab session. And then the sign of the resultant, R, M, M, S, E, times our signature matrix, times Y. That's our output. That would be 1s and minus 1s. Again, this is converted to 1s and zeros, And we do the exclusive OR again. And count out the number of errors. So quite simply, I know it's not simple to derive, but we're not expecting you to derive it. This is the minimum mean squared error matched filter. This is obviously more complex than the other two and in your laboratory sessions and your coursework assignment you will investigate do, is that complexity required and under what conditions. So on a visual comparison of the three that we talked about, if the red component is our signal the blue is our multiple axis interference and our additive white gaussian noise is represented by yellow. Then here we have signal slightly higher, higher power than multiple axis interference in this case and low power additive white gaussian noise. So in the match filter case then the signal is exactly the same representation as our input. So the same ratio between signal MAI and AWGN. In the decorrelator then the the um, the MAI is reduced to almost zero and the additive white Gaussian noise is increased a little. However for the match filter MMSC then both the um, we have a reduction in the MAI but not quite as much as the decorrelation and there is an increase in the um, additive white Gaussian noise. So this is the best, is, it gives the best performance overall but it's more complex. So match filter based receivers, the parameters that we know in the system receiver and there are some parameters that have to be estimated. We know signatures on the transmitter spreading sequences. We know the number of users. We know it's an additive white Gaussian noise channel. We know the spe spe spectral characteristics of additive Gaussian noise. And we have said that there is no narrowband interference. 
for all users signal amplitudes timing and carrier uh, time amplitudes timing and carrier we must must have car timing and carrier synchronization and for all users we have the absence of multipath fading or known multipath fading pro profiles are assumed now um, again, if you did the masters, we would look into this case with multipath fading. So, in summary, what we've we've answered what is multi-user detec detection, and what is CDMA? What are the different types of codes used in CDMA? What is message despreading and despreading? And we've given an example. And then once we've spread. How do we detect what was actually transmitted? And I've given three examples of detectors, match filters, match filter decorrelators, and minimum mean squared error match filters. Thank you.